Good morning boys and girls. As you can see, I'm not at school today. I'm down on the beach having my daily walk and I found the strangest thing down here. I've no idea how it got here, but I thought you might like a look at it. What is a pot of soup doing on the beach? How bizarre. And then there's a note. You may look, you may smell, and you may touch, but do not taste. This soup is only for snorgs. What on earth is a snorg? And here's another note. Rules for snorgs. Do not have visitors, do not have adventures, and do not share your soup. Go to bed at eight o'clock. And there's a book. There's a story here, which I think you might like. I have no idea what a snorg is, and I have no idea who could have left that pot of soup on the beach. But let's read this story, and we might find out. The story is called Snorg and the Sailor. And there's a picture of a snorg. Isn't he the strangest looking creature? with a trunk like an elephant, and he's all hairy, and then he's got feet like a bird. And I think this might be the sailor. He looks like a rabbit to me. I think he's a sailor because he's wearing a, a rubber ring that you might use to save yourself if you were out at sea, and he's got a big oar. And here's a snorg Scott's pot of soup, of course. Let's look at the back. Snorgs don't like visitors. Snorgs don't share soup, and snorgs most definitely do not go on adventures. But then one night, there's a knock, knock, knock at the door. This snorg's life is about to change beyond his wildest dreams. I wonder what's going to happen. Let's see. The snorg lived alone in an ugly little house on the marsh. Every day he snuffled along the shoreline, picking samphire to make soup. This is samphire here, it's a plant that grows near the sea. His webbed feet sank into the mud and the wind made lonely sounds as it came in from the sea. He looks quite miserable, doesn't he? Every evening, the snorg huddled in his chair by the fire. How lucky I am, he muttered, to have nobody to share my fire. He took a slurp of salty soup. How nice, he said, to have soup all to myself. But one night, a terrible storm blew up. The snorg was listening to the howl of the wind when he heard a sound at the door. Knock, 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 knock. Nobody had ever knocked the snorg's door before. He sh shuffled over and opened it just a crack. Outside in the rain was a bedraggled creature. Hello, said the creature. I'm a sailor. My boat has been washed ashore in the storm. Can I come in? No, said the snorg. Snorgs don't have visitors. Oh, but you've got such a nice house, said the sailor and he marched right in. He sat down in the snorg's chair and warmed his toes by the fire. The snorg hrumphed and went and sat in the bath. That's a strange place to sit, isn't it? Mmm, samphire soup, said the sailor. May I? Snorgs don't share soup, said the snorg. But the sailor had already helped himself. Delicious, he said. I'm on an adventure, said the sailor. Do you want to hear about it? No, thank you, said the snorg. Snorgs don't like adventures. And he went and sat in his bath. But the sailor told him anyway. The snorg pretended not to listen. 
The sailor saved the best story to last. It was a particularly terrible and exciting tale about an island that was really a whale, about whirlwinds and water spouts and a fearsome sea monster. I think the snork's starting to look quite interested. But right in the middle, the clock on the wall struck bedtime. Eight o'clock, shouted the snork. Bedtime, said the sailor. But what about the story? If you have to, you can tell me the rest in the morning, said the snork. Snorks always sleep at eight o'clock. That night, the snork had dreams more colourful and wonderful than any snork had ever dreamed before. He dreamed he was at sea with his pot of soup. He dreamed he was building sandcastles and climbing trees with monkeys and surfing with dolphins and picking flowers and climbing the mountains. I think it was because of the adventures of the sailor. The snorg woke up after the sun had risen. He felt happier than he could ever remember feeling. It was probably those lovely dreams. But when he peered out of his bathtub, he saw only his cold house, his cold fireplace and his cold pot of soup. The sailor was gone. Sailor, he called. I'm ready for the rest of the story. But the only answer was the lonely moan of the wind. The snorg hurried to the door and peered out. The beach was deserted. Then on the horizon, he spotted the tiny triangle of a disappearing sail. Sailor, he shouted, wait, I have to hear the end of the story. But the boat just bobbed further away. Oh, if only I had a boat, the snorg cried. I wonder what he's going to do next. What do you think he's going to do? Then he had an idea and soon he was paddling towards the horizon with his bathtub. Sailor, wait, he cried. I need to know what happened to the whale. When he was far out to sea, he suddenly ran aground. He's right on top of the whale, look, and he doesn't even realise. Who put that island there, he muttered. He clambered out and pushed the boat back into the water. Sailor, he shouted, I need to know. What happened with the whirlwind? What do you think is going to happen next? he just started paddling again when he noticed the breeze ruffling his fur. Sailor, wait, he cried. Look, he's caught in the whirlwind. He is having an adventure and he doesn't even know. I need to know what the sea monster did. But his voice was drowned out by the wind. Who do you think he's going to meet next? The waves towered higher and higher and look who's in them, the sea monster. Sailor, where are you? The snore cried. At that moment, one enormous wave picked him up and spun him around. And swept him onto dry land. The snore peered out of his bathtub. And there, And there, by a crackling fire, was the sailor making soup. Hello, said the snork. Are you on an adventure? Absolutely not, said the snork. Snorks don't have adventures. I've just come to hear the end of the story. Ah, said the sailor, offering him a bowl of soup. But the story hasn't ended yet. The snork stamped his foot. But I have to know what happens next. He cried. The sailor scratched his chin. Well, in that case, you'll just have to come with me. We set sail at dawn. That's when the sun comes up. And what an extraordinary adventure it turned out to be. 
You can see him in his bathtub being towed along on the back of the little boat and the sea monster with his pot of soup. And they went in a hot air balloon and they went camping and they caught a huge fish and they travelled on sand dunes on a camel and went sledging in the snow. What fabulous adventures! And the snorkel looks as if he's having a great time, doesn't he? That is the end of the story. And I think that Snorg might have to change his rules. Snorg should have visitors. Snorg should have adventures. Snorg should share their soup. And Snorg should not go to bed at eight o'clock, except on a school night, of course. <laughs>